So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology. iOS 15.3.1 on the iPhone over here. Google Pixel 6 Pro, this is the Pro Max. Google 6 Pro has Android 12. I just got a mid-February update, but I wanna talk about the differences between these two softwares. Maybe you can decide which is gonna be for you. Again, in privacy, because this is something that's very important to a lot of people this year. And in iOS 15, you can see that you do have a whole section just dedicated to tracking and you know just turning off tracking which i do for a lot of applications i don't want applications tracking me all day they ask you if you want to track the google pixel 6 pro also does this it's been doing it andrew's been doing that for a long time and then you have location services up here and you can find precise locations on pretty much every application and you can also tweak your own system services down here you have a bunch more going on here and at the bottom you'll see analytics and improvements as well as apple advertising they also have an app privacy report which will tell you which app is using your network and stuff like that. So a lot going on in the area of privacy, but Google is no slouch here with Android 12 here. You'll see they have a whole privacy dashboard, which will lay out in a, like a circular format here, a location showing what's using most camera, microphone. It'll show you the applications, the camera, microphone as well at the bottom. You can tweak all of this stuff. It's very detailed as well. Camera access, microphone access, and then down here you'll see even more. They also have their own section on ads and advertising and personalization, stuff like that. So quite a bit going on. I would say that they are pretty comparable in this respect. Now, Google has their own security section, which is also very important. For Apple, you're just gonna have the section of face ID, passcode, make sure everything stays secure. Over here on the Android 12, you'll see app security, find my device, which Apple also has, find my as well in their own application. They have their own password section down here, right down there, they'll have their own password section, but Google kind of lays it out all simply right here. You also have Google Play system updates you can check for, as well as you know security, account checkups, things like that. If you go to advanced settings, there is even more encryption details. It'll show your phone's encrypted. You have suspicious, message alerts, so a lot going on here to protect your security and your privacy. Let's talk about the control center versus the quick settings over here for the Pixel. You'll see it's laid out quite nicely, big, large buttons. I think the iPhone is a little bit easier in that they're just right there. You don't have to kind of swipe through them and stuff. That's just an extra action. At the same time, I like how the text is large and easy to read. So that's kind of easy to read and kind of find out where, where you're going. But, but with Apple's iOS, you have to punch into some of these to go ahead and get to different features. I find that a little bit of an extra step as well. But once you get it, you kind of know what's going on here. They're both quite easy. The thing I don't like about the Android setup here for Android 12 on the Pixel is it shows the version down there. I just think that looks a little tacky. They just get that out of there but i like how you can edit everything right here from the quick settings you can also power off from right here which is very different from apple system where you have to go ahead and hold the buttons and again on apple's system over here i gotta go to the control center to go ahead and tweak these and there's no real way to see kind of where they're at until you kind of move them and then check where they're at so that can be improved. Apple can give us a way to kind of like move them right there from the control center itself. So thing I have to say though, is that they both have similar systems and that they both have iMessage, FaceTime, but this one has Google's messages and Google Duo over here. So they both have similar ways of communicating. However, a lot of people are gonna find iMessage to be much more of a better system. It's just much more like a WhatsApp type of, type of application, whereas Google's is more of a, you know, it's more of like an SMS based system. So there's a spam and block section on here. Love it. I don't have any right now because I delete most of them, but it'll detect messages that are total scams. Like this is so sick. I really love this about the Google Pixel 6 Pro and Android 12. So do keep that in mind. Although Apple and iOS 15 does have a similar feature. If you go to messages, you'll be able to filter unknown text text right here. So if you go to unknown and spam, you'll be able to do that, but you can filter unknown senders and then just kind of go to the known sender. So you know, you know to check like, okay, I don't know this sender. It helps out a little bit, but that spam protection is even better, I would say, for Android 12. When it comes to their app trays, you'll see they look quite similar, although the Pixel kind of puts the whole app there in front, whereas the iPhone kind of hides it behind. You kind of got to scroll through. Some people might think this looks a little bit better the way it looks when you're going through. Some people may like this. Personally, I find it quite similar. However, you do have the ability to just hit clear all. There on here, you can do two at a time. You can even do three at a time if you can get all three fingers on there. 
you can do up to three at a time as well. That's one thing to know is that the pixel does allow you to screenshot this area or select something. So that's a little bit different. When talking about their settings menu, they're actually quite different looking. They both have the ability to have a search section up there at the top. They both have networks, Bluetooth. The Google has more of an icon based look on the left. So you'll have to see, you'll have to kind of find it by the icon and it kind of matches the system color, whereas the iPhone has the color coded icons right there. You'll see right there, they're all color. So kind of could be easier to remember for some people, I would say, if you kind of just look for that color, I think that's a little bit better because you kind of got to remember here on the pixel, you know, which is which I would more read the text on here. I just wish this was in color, but you know, maybe color matching the overall material you, but for overall, I would say that the pixel has a much more legible, larger, settings menu, things are a little bit cleaner, I would say there's not as much going on, but the iPhone is quite easy with its color coded icons menu. I think Apple could get rid of all these applications at the bottom and neatly organize this in just to one section that says apps. It would just make a world of a difference, I would say. And navigating the operating systems is quite similar. There's a couple of difference here. On Android 12, you do have the ability to go into the app drawer like that. Over here, you have the app library off to the right, but it's, but it's always all the way to the right. So you, if you have like 10 pages, you're gonna have to go way over on the iPhone. I only got two for the video, but if you have more, it's gonna take a while to get over to the app library unless hold down on these dots and you can just swipe quickly through there like that. But with the pixel, just right there. And everything's laid out in alphabetical order here with some recent apps at the top for the pixel over here, laid out more in an AI based format where like the AI kind of just detects what category it should go in. And then you'll see right there, everything is neatly organized. So it takes out the folder work you might have to do on an Android device. When it comes to themes and customization, there is quite a bit you can do on both of them. However, right out of the gate, the Google Pixel gives you much better customization. Over here, you can do some theming options on iPhone. You have to download some stuff and you gotta tweak it yourself. There is aesthetics and different kits you can download. There's a lot you can do with the upgraded, you know, iOS 15 over here, especially with widgets. You can get your nice custom look, but it just comes much easier on the Pixel. You can just change, and Pixel gives you, and Android 12 gives you a bunch of wallpapers, and you can get this on any Android, these Google wallpapers. You can get them all. You just gotta download the Google wallpapers. But they give you a ton right out of the box and they kind of just match up easily with the system. So if I click this one right here, let's go ahead and click that one. You'll see how it's changing the color. I'm not gonna set it officially, but it changes the color. And then you have the, let's go down here. You'll see you have themed icons you can do, which will change the icons of the whole color of the system. It's in beta, so sometimes some of the apps don't change, but still it's quite nice. And then you could change the app grid right here. So Android 12 makes it much less like you have to, let's say you have to, much less like you have to customize yourself. You probably don't even need to download a launcher. There's a lot going on in here where you don't really have to do it if you don't want. What Android does have a ton of cu more customization than what I just showed you. So if you just type in launcher right here, you're gonna have the ability to download a ton of launchers, Nova being one of the most popular of all time, 50 plus million downloads. But there's a ton of launchers. There's even an iOS 15 launcher if you wanna make your Android device look like the iPhone. So <laughs> there's, there's definitely a lot of customization, a lot more going on for Android 12. In terms of widgets, the way you add widgets looks super similar on both of these. And I think this is an area where Google kind of took Apple's clean widget look because it used to look a lot different here but now they look quite similar. If you go ahead and tap something like App Store, for example, you'll see it gives you the options to add here. Now let's go down here for Google's Play Store. Let's see if they give us one for Play Store. There's actually not a widget for Play Store. Let's just hit the clock then. You'll see, it'll show you its different types of widgets. So they're not too much different in the way you add widgets. I kind of like the way iOS looks though. It still looks quite clean. But when you actually add them, I would say that Google's widgets are a little bit more interactive, whereas you can, on the iPhone, when you tap the widgets, it kind of just goes straight into the application. There is a smart stack where you can scroll through di different widgets within one, but when you tap it, it always goes into the app. The widgets, a little bit more interactive here for a Google. Over here, you'll find less widgets, but clean widgets. They also do have a very big similarity in focus. They both have focus modes. I think Apple's is a little bit more easier to understand. With Google's over here, you have to go in and check the apps. There's a little bit more work you gotta do, I'd say. With these, it's kind of very simply laid out for iOS 15, so you can just hit personal, work, sleep, mindfulness, driving, whatever. You get the point. You could add your own focuses. 
these are a little bit easier to use and they sync across your devices. So I do like the focus mode set up here on the iPhone, but I also like how the Pixel has its own bedtime mode. It'll make the whole screen black and white. Whereas we have more of a sleep mode for the iPhone. It'll kind of dim the lock screen, stuff like that. So it has its stuff going on too. Now, when it comes to animations, they do look a little bit different, but not too much. I would say the average person would be happy with either of these in performance. I think, I think Apple's are a little more slick. They're a little more smooth. This has always been one of the strong suits of the iPhone. Just the animation just looks so good. <laughs> At Google Pixel 6 Pro though is pretty amazing. It's one of the best Android phones I've ever seen in this department. And the gesture when you come up like this also feels quite nice. Whereas on the iPhone, we know we're gonna just expect butter on there. Just look how smooth that is right there. Bang. So now if you are watching a video on either, you do have picture in picture for both of these. You'll see right there, this was a Google feature first but you can see the actual usability of it is the same on both. You can pinch the zoom like that. You can pinch the zoom like that. Apple feels a little smoother with its pinch action, but you have a smaller video player. It gets a little bit smaller for the pixel there. This is about as small as it's gonna get there for the iPhone if you take a look there. Definitely gets smaller there on the pixel if you want a little bit less in your face. So if I go ahead and zoom like that, it'll get bigger. And you can bring it over here to the right. Pixel kind of hides it over there with Android 12 over there, it gives you this little arrow. So I do like how Apple does kind of hide it a little bit better, but you can still hide it there. And Google P beats Apple in this one major area to me, it's called landscape mode. So yes, you could put Android 12 into a landscape format. And this is just, I just love this. Like this is a big phone and sometimes you're chilling, you wanna watch a video, you wanna come out and you don't wanna be flipping your phone back around. Oh, over here, yep, there you go iOS 15. I'm not trying to sound biased. Like I don't like iOS. I love iOS, but I'm, I'm just saying like, come on, Apple, like this is a big phone. Let's do some landscape action over here. Then we have the ability to go ahead on the pixel and we can split the screen as well. So we do have split screen mode for the pixel and Android 12. One thing I like about one UI that's not in here though, is the ability to flip these apps real easily, but at least you can have two applications. You can't really extend them much here. That's like a one UI feature but at least you can have two apps side by side. There's no such thing for the iOS experience. So I had to point that out. It's a very big difference between both of these. So taking a look at their keyboards, they're not too different. They're both white keyboards. The Google Pixel will kind of tweak depending on the color and you know the theming you got going on, it does change a little bit colors, stuff like that. If you go into dark mode here for the iPhone, it also will go dark and stuff like that. Um, we do have similar options, but Apple puts their emojis right there. Google puts them there. They swipe up here on the Pixel and they both have a ton of emojis, but I feel like Apple updates their emojis a little bit faster. You'll just get like new emojis with every other update, like every two or three big updates, you'll get some new emojis. So definitely the system goes left to right here and it's laid out quite similarly. We do have Bitmoji on here. You do have some stickers you can do for the Pixel. You have gifts right there. And then of course with Apple, you do get a lot of that stuff going on with an iMessage, so. But you have theming options you could do here for the Pixel, which gives your keyboard a lot more customization. Once again, we're talking about customization. Customization, it's still king on the Android experience. So if that's something you dig, you want, that's gonna be great. Also, you have a floating keyboard on here. Now you could do this stuff on Apple's iPad OS, but over here, you can't float the keyboard on this experience right here. I don't think many people would use this on a phone, but at the same time, having it just shows, it just shows the amount of options you have available for the Pixel experience. So I just wanted to mention how they're different a little bit in the keyboard section. Now, Apple has screen time, Google has digital well-being, which also shows some screen time. So if we go over here, digital well-being, it'll show you what you've been doing, which I really like this layout. It gives you a nice breakdown. Over here for Apple, you'll get screen time right here. It'll show you all your activity, what you've been doing around the phone. You could set some limits, stuff like that. So they got both, but they both have ways to go ahead and help you, you know, get a better handle on how much you're using your phone day to day. You can do flip to shush on the Pixel. We're not gonna go every, over every Pixel feature because all Android phones have digital well-being, but they don't all have 
you know, the flip to shush. What I have to mention is most Android 12 phones these days, especially OLED based devices do have these always on displays. There's no such thing for Apple and it's kind of lame, especially if you're not wearing a smartwatch because you can't see notifications, you can't see the time without actually unlocking the screen. And sometimes that's all you want to check. Now they both do have this feature that's quite similar where if you lift to wake, it's called raise to wake for iOS and then it's called lift to wake on the Pixel where if you lift up, it will kind of just light up the screen so you can get right into your contact. That's quite similar. Now, one thing that's very different is the way you place applications on the home screen. So let's say I wanna bring this app over here. It always flies up here for iOS. You can't place them anywhere you want in the home screen. I actually seen people saying, this is one of the reasons why I wanna use Android is because I wanna place apps wherever I want on the screen. This goes back to the customization factor. That's definitely an improvement here by using the Android experience, being able to just place your apps anywhere you want on the screen. They both have this similarity where when you're using the Apple experience, you're super tied into Apple's ecosystem. So a bunch of Apple applications, if I just type Apple here, there's a ton of Apple based applications that are built by Apple that you're gonna just get sucked into if you use the system. It's just, it's just gonna happen. Android's a little more open but there's a lot going on here with Google. They're really pushing their services as well. Um, you hit Google right here. It's gonna be pretty difficult to use the Pixel or the Android 12 experience without getting into the Google services. And not that it's a bad thing, a lot of these services are pretty amazing on both of them. I oh, when it comes to Google Assistant versus Siri, I find Google Assistant to be a much better assistant and that it's just more accurate and it shows you real time what you're saying. So if I say something like, tell me a joke. What's a pig's favorite karate move? A pork chop. <laughs> you get it? So you've seen in real time, it was telling me exactly what I was saying. So what is 55 plus two plus three plus six? 55 plus two plus three plus six. Is 66. So you seen right there, it showed me in real time. The results are usually more accurate. Google's a little bit better in this respect and that's where they dominate is in search. So if you're searching stuff through the assistant, it's always gonna work very well. For Siri though, do I have any alarms? What is your name? My name, it's Siri. Tell me a joke. I would tell you a time travel joke, but you didn't get it. So you can see right there, it does show you a little pop-up. In Siri, I find f sounds a little more, more natural. It does sound very natural. You could change the voices and stuff like that. But if you care a lot about search, I'd go with the Pixel, with the Android 12 and the Google Assistant. So which operating system feels quicker and smoother? I'd say that the Android 12 feels a little quicker, like a little snappier, but I'd say the iPhone just feels more polished. And the actual chipset in these iPhones with Apple's polish makes the phone actually faster at its core. But Android has this really quick kind of snappy feel. You can see it's just ridiculous kind of feeling quick. And if you go to developer options, apps just open very snapping and blazing fast. But at, the, at its core, Apple is still the smoother, faster system. Another area is accessibility. They both have a lot of features within accessibility. Some of my favorite for Google is the live caption mode. Pretty cool feature. Uh, on the iPhone, there's an awesome feature as well within touch. You can do a back tap and kind of like double tap the back of the phone and give you like these different features you can do. Pretty amazing right there. And also you have the assistive touch, which has been around forever. They both also do have this cool ability to dim the displays way down at nighttime. For Android 12, you do have this extra dim mode right here, which will make the screen ridiculously dim at nighttime, especially if you lower that brightness. I'm gonna turn it off for the video. And over here with an accessibility, if you go to display and text size on the iPhone at the very bottom, you can reduce this white point, drag that up to 100, and you can have a ridiculously dim display at nighttime for the iPhone as well. So you're not out of that feature there. Of course, they both do have dark modes and night shift modes as well. Over here on the Google, it's called night light. Over here, it's called night shift, like I just said for the iPhone and they both have the ability to tweak that intensity of that light as well and schedule it. So that's quite similar as well. Apple has this universal spotlight search and you can kind of search anything right from the Google section as well. Even applications, you'll see they'll just pop up. Now Apple will give you a lot of results directly from the spotlight search where you'll have to go into Google's 
you know, application over here, but you'll see like, say we're looking up Kanye West, for example, you'll see some web images right there, some information before you even have to go into Safari and stuff like that. So that's a pretty cool touch. I think the power off menu is easier to access for the pixel as well as, you know, a little bit quicker. So if I hit that, it's just bang, it's just right on here. For the iPhone, it's similar setup. You have to put the volume up or down and you'll do your power button and then You'll see right there, it takes a second and then it appears. You have emergency SOS, medical ID. Pretty similar overall though. Let me go ahead and do that again. Let me show you how the pixels looks really quickly. You'll see right there, both of them have similar features, but you have a lockdown feature there on the pixel. You can lock down your phone really quickly. So that's a nice touch. Another thing is that their one-handed modes look actually quite similar. So if I swipe down on the bar on both of them, you have a one-handed mode that operates almost exactly the same. So like I say, if you really like iOS and you wanna try Android, Pixel is probably the way to go here. Now, which one does get updates quicker? That's something we haven't talked about much in this video. And I gotta say, not only are they faster for iOS, they also come in more frequently, but Google is probably the best at this in terms of like how quick they come in. Samsung is putting out much longer support right now, like over a year more than Pixel has agreed or Google has agreed to do for the Pixel. So maybe that'll get updated later this year, but you're getting a lot of quick system updates for Pixel. They just download a lot slower to me and they take a longer time to, to just update. They're quicker and faster on the iPhone and Apple does a little bit more updating, I feel like, than Android 12, but still Android 12 gets enough updates and it definitely stays secure throughout your usage of it. App Store versus Play Store is gonna be down to your own personal preference, but I do wanna show you that they both offer similar stuff. You do have apps, of course, on both of them, offers here, you have arcade over here, games on the Pixel, so there's a lot going on for both of them. All your core applications that you would want on both is definitely available for both systems, so no major issues with those. Kind of just comes down to you like the apps on the iPhone or do you like the apps on the Pixel? The Pixel has a lot more. I would say though, the Android 12 has a lot more of a chance of getting, you know, like some malware in an app. So you gotta be careful with the Play Store. There's a lot less of that to worry about with Apple experience. There's a much more tight policy. Although Google is improving this, they're getting better with this. But within Google's system, you go to app security, the Play Store does now scan for these, you know, harmful applications. So there is a way to get around that but it's still a little bit more risky, so be careful. Make sure you're downloading from reputable developers, reputable applications on the Android 12, and if you go third party, you're on your own. I can't help you there. With the Apple experience on App Store, definitely super good applications, and most of them are safe because of stringent policies to get onto Apple's App Store. The pro of iOS is that it's more locked down, which allows you to basically have an easier experience, no matter which iPhone you get, it's pretty simple. Um, if you get an, a Pixel and then you go get a Motorola and then you get a OnePlus or a Samsung, they all operate a little bit differently. So it could be a little more confusing. And the open factor of this does allow you to get more customization, you know, have more control over your phone, but at the same time puts you at a higher risk. I'm not going to Chipotle right now. It puts you at a higher risk of having an issue. So definitely you gotta be a little more careful, but the Pixel is one of the safest and most secure Android phones you could buy. So. Conclusion, at the end of the day, both of these are very neck and neck. iOS 15 versus Android 12, they're super close in what they do, and the hardware is getting great. Look at the Pixel, a gorgeous piece of hardware for Android. Definitely much more premium feeling than before, and a very smooth display overall, just like the iPhone, very high-end looking display as well. So I gotta say, they're, they're super close. It just comes down, do you want iMessage, FaceTime, the Apple ecosystem and services, or do you want Google's ecosystem and services? Which one are you more on? Which one do you use more? That really is gonna make up the difference. Which one is better to you? Let me know down below. If you found a video helpful, entertaining, educating, informing, let me know as well by a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here, be sure to be well. I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace.